Hi, I'm Bill Alderson. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the essential building blocks of performance management. You bought all those tools, you've got all those systems, you've got all those resources, you have all those people. How's it working for you? How are your end users uh, and the credibility that you have with other business uh, uh, organizations throughout your company? How are things going? Well, let's take a look at some of the essential elements and make sure you're not missing any. And if you're about to embark upon a new program, let's make sure that you have an essential foundation on which to build. Okay? The first thing is know yourself. If you don't know your own architecture, your people don't either. So you hire that new, really great certified uh, group of people, you hire a new vendor, you, you know, for out, from outsourcing, you got all of these wonderful people, highly skilled and qualified. They don't have a clue about the way that your system was architected, configured, and built to meet your company demands, the fingerprint of your environment. You don't have it. You, you need to uh, help people understand where you have come from, the history of your architecture, and where you're going. And that would be the master plan we'll talk about a little bit later. But the first thing is, is, is a term that I came up with, and I call it architecture ownership. So right now, who owns your architecture? Is it in your technologist's uh, head? Is it in your employees' heads? Are they about to retire? Uh, are you, is it in your outsourcing organization? Who owns your architecture? And when I say architecture, what I'm talking about is truly the definitive diagrams, the packet flow, the schematic from end to end. So if you have a bunch of users out here, okay, and they're coming across your architecture, of course you've got, you know, uh, dual internet feeds, uh, dual everything, you know, all the way through your architecture, everything's dual connected, interconnected, high availability. Ooh, that high availability stuff, man. A lot of organizations only find out that their high availability wasn't very high after a problem occurs. So when you're building these high, available, uh, high availability circuits, it's essential that the engineering and the maintenance staff knows exactly how all of those things are connected and their critical uh, uh, configuration uh, issues. So as you come through and you're, you're communicating across this enterprise and you've got wide areas, local areas, VPNs, you've got all sorts of gizmos, gadgets, widgets, thingamabobs in between. We call those our man in the middle. What's a man in the middle? You have any WAN optimizers? They basically go in between your client somewhere out here and you embed them so that they work and they take the packets off and they then encrypt in some cases and compress and optimize and then they come back out over here on the other side and then you come over here and you go to a load balancer let's say and of course everything's redundant you know uh, and so you've got all of this infrastructure and then you come over to your servers okay and of course you got tier one you got tier two and you may have tier three and those could be um, you know right in your data center they might be in your data center they could be uh, uh, you know remote uh, they could be distributed across multiple data centers within your, envi within your environment and they could be out in the cloud somewhere right so you've got these systems and they communicate you know uh, with a web server and an app server and a database server and maybe a another you know uh, secondary SOA interface so you know from here to here that's your path across this system so what I'm asking is who who owns your architecture you know what people's heads is your stuff in out there who's got that information and most of the time what I find out is people come along and you know they join the organization and their knowledge is of course here that's baseline it's zero oh they are certified they have you know database certifications they've got network certifications virtualization certifications they know the technology oh so well 
Absolutely. Desktop, security, they are experts in all of these different technologies. Now, the trouble is, is that they, when they come to you, they don't know anything about how your environment is configured. They may be quick studies, but you know, typically it takes a little time and by osmosis they learn a little bit, right? And then there's a critical problem and whoop, wow, does the learning occur? Because why? Because they've got a problem that they've got to figure out. Well, the longer, see, this problem starts here and it gets resolved here, right? Well, the longer it's going gonna, it's gonna to take longer to resolve that problem if what? If your people don't understand the architecture and they're having to go out, ferret through cables, connections, configurations to reverse engineer while they're trying to solve one of your critical problems, okay, at the 11th hour, when it's the worst possible time, when the right people aren't there, and all that, right? Now you've got a problem. Well, that's when the learning experience happens, right there they really start to learn and their knowledge is, is, is uh, magnified exponentially. And then they continue on and then they continue on and learn a little bit more, have another problem, great learning experience. And again, you know, this time frame may be shortened because it didn't take them as long to figure things out because they had some history back here. And so, you know, after a couple of years, your, your technology folks are pretty pretty adept, they've learned to work with the other organizations and things are pretty good. And then all of a sudden you go along and then you have a recompete on your outsourcing contract. Uh, somebody who's your key uh, technology uh, manager or key technologist decides to take a job somewhere else. Out walked tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands or perhaps millions of dollars worth of your configuration that you had them learn and figure out. Is it documented? Do you have the schematic of how all of this works? Is it cross technology? Okay, what does cross technology mean? It means that, okay, you've got your desktop organization and they have, you know, kind of a configuration diagram of how their virus protection works and, you know, um, how security and authentication is working and that sort of thing. So you got your desktop, right? And then you've got your network and they've got, you know, where your DNS servers are, where your uh, dual um, routers are, where your dual firewalls are. Then you've got your your security folks and they've got a security infrastructure, right? And so each one of them has diagrams, depictions, spreadsheets, etc. that they're keeping track of for their particular silo, right? So, you know, again, this is desktop, this is uh, network, this is security. Okay, now let's continue on and you go over here and you've got platform. Well, that's your servers and that sort of thing, right? You, you may have native servers, you may have virtual servers, but they've got a configuration of how those virtual servers are all configured when they move from uh, you know host to host or site to site or data center to data center based upon a lot of different algorithms, okay? Then you've got your databases, okay? You got your databases um, and you've got your, you know, your, you got your apps, okay? So you've got all these very, and then you've got storage on top of that, right? Um, so you've got all of these various silos that are taking care of your technology and every one of them has documentation and, and diagrams and that sort of thing. What I'm talking about is a diagram that takes basically and allows you to put your finger on each one of these circuits so that if you're having errors across this circuit you could see that it was errors right here. If you were had an outage on this circuit you could see that all the traffic was bypassing and coming over here and you'd see in your in your metrics you'd see increased utilization across that link that you normally didn't see. Do you see what I'm getting at? You basically have a blueprint of your environment. That's what I call architecture ownership. Architecture ownership. And then you've got tier one with your web servers, your app servers, your database servers, and your cloud and that sort of thing. So, who owns your architecture? That's the question. Who owns your architecture? Do you own it? Does the organization own it? Does the silo owner own it? The silo manager own it? 
Uh, is it distributed completely or do you have a holistic view of your environment where you take and show the, the client and all the way the help desk folks if they have a diagram like this they can very rapidly go through and determine ah, I need to get these guys involved in solving that particular problem and the whole idea is is to take this documentation okay from each one of these and I'm not saying to replace it necessarily, but I'm saying to consolidate it into one world view so that all your technology people can have a little bit of cross technology understanding, you know, uh, diversity. You know, we, we have walls of diversity and technology and, and that sort of thing. And ignorance is what drives those walls up. So if you teach your various silo technologists, a little bit about the other technology and how it's all working uh, holistically when they go to solve a problem they're going to understand how these uh, systems work and they're not going to have to reverse engineer everything or you're not going to have to pull everyone together constantly you know to solve a problem not that that's a bad thing you do need to do that on occasion but if you have a little cross technology knowledge so how do you achieve architecture ownership well you reverse engineer your environment, you get this holistic view, everybody collaborates to come up with a, you know, a single view, and then, uh, you know, some people may be documented better than others, so they may learn that, hey, within my silo, I need to document a little bit better because I can't provide the piece that goes into the upper architecture. So each one of your silo managers may learn that hey you know indeed they need to do a better job of documenting their systems and and that just feeds right into and clicks into the rest of the architecture you have a holistic picture and if that is documented at this time okay what's going to happen well if you have a recompete of a contract and you lose all those people okay you still own your architecture. You still have it in the diagrams, the documents, it's cross technology. Maybe you just lose, you know, the network support group. Uh, maybe you lose just the database or in the app part of your network or the desktop portion you're recompeting or it's changing or you're outsourcing. So if you have this in a holistic manner, then your organization owns their architecture.